Hello, this is Unsung with Game Leap, and in today's video, we're going to be teaching you the best itemization to go when Season 14 begins. Season 14 has a plethora of new items that are all going to be strong in their own different ways, but there are one cast of items that stand out above all others, and it is not the mage itemization. I promise you, once the season does drop, we are going to see on-hit champions skyrocket in playrate in all three of the primary lanes, as well as the jungle roll. We're going to be covering why these items are so strong, what makes them just so oppressive, and how you can get the most out of them so that way you have an edge on all of your opponents at the very beginning of the season. Before we continue on, make sure that you like the video and then sub to the Game League YouTube channel. We're going to be posting tons of Season 14 content very shortly here, so that way you can get an advantage over all of your opponents. Let's go ahead and get right into it, starting off with our first system change, which is going to be the new Enchanter item. Dreammaker is one of, if not the most overpowered Enchanter item that has ever been introduced to the League of Legends. If you've been playing for a while, I'm sure that you've heard of Old Ardent Sensor, or you experienced it yourself. What made this item so strong was the amount of stats that it gave you paired with the on-hit damage and the lifesteal as well. Dream Maker functions in a similar way. Every 8 seconds, gain a blue dream bubble and a purple dream bubble. Healing and shielding another ally blows both dream bubbles to them, empowering them for 3 seconds. Blue bubbles reduce a flat amount of incoming damage dealt to your ally, and purple dream bubbles grant massive amounts of bonus magic damage to your ally's next attack. These two effects make shields wildly effective on any and all on-hit champion, especially when they come from spammable, high-value shields already. Things like Karma Shield, Lulu Shield, Janna Shield, and the like all have some sort of bonus effect that they grant you, be it movement speed, extra damage, or an insane amount of reduction. Making strong shields stronger in the early game or the early mid game where on-hit champions are at their weakest removes counterplay inherently from these champions. Most on-hit champions need to hit at least two items before they come online, but with the inclusion of Dream Maker, one item on-hit champions are very scary because they're basically impossible to kill. Currently, Blade the Rune King into Radiant Virtue Varus is incredibly popular due to the amount of damage he's able to output paired with the durability. Dream Maker is basically a Radiant Virtue but on another champion. It is that strong in the amount of defensive stats that it grants. The damage that you get from Blade of the Rune King by itself is only going up in Season 14 as well because it's a lot more consistent. The first auto attack that we apply with the new Blade of the Rune King will instantly slow our opponent and force him to interact with us. Any extended interaction with a Bork user will result in us losing the duel 9 times out of 10. Blade champions place you on a time limit where you have to kill them before they out DPS you. Currently on live, we have to hit our opponent 3 times which gives them ample time to run away if they're paying attention. This ends the interaction early and then we have to wait for our cooldowns to come back which gives our opponent an opportunity to engage. In Season 14, even if we bait the cooldown and we manage to go in on the champion, then the Dream Maker passive will bail them out 9 times out of 10 and they will still have that insane amount of front loaded current health damage due to the magic damage that is granted by Dream Maker. It is not directly current HP damage that's going to be hitting us, but the high amount of bonus magic damage that is present here might as well be. Instead of directly granting us attack speed and lifesteal like old Ardent Sensor did, we gain immediate tank stats as well as burst. This complements the overbuff lethal tempo, and we're basically in the same scenario as once before. If you ever want to take a deeper look into a champion like Varus, head on over to GameLeap.com. We have the best tips and tricks videos for champions like Varus, so you don't have to invest time into practice tool or scrounging up YouTube videos to find all the hidden mechanics and tricks present for these champions. See you on the site. Terminus is a new addition to Summoner's Rift, and I promise you that this item will really shake up the meta. Essentially, this is a non-crit on-hit item that gives you the usual bonus magic damage. The magic damage that's dealt here is quite low, but it is more than made up for by its passive juxtaposition. Our auto attacks alternate between light and dark. Light attacks grant us a scaling amount of armor and magic resist, stacking up to 5 times, which then lasts for 5 seconds. Dark attacks grant us percentage armor and magic penetration, stacking up to a maximum value that also lasts for up to 5 seconds. Are you starting to see what the problem here is? Imagine this, we have an AD carry that is being shielded or has a shield built into their kit. Terminus makes all these shields more effective because the armor and magic resist does apply to shielding, meaning that we have effective health as a squishy target. But not only do we have effective health, we also have a flat damage reduction, which means that we're basically unburstable and we're going to be getting these Terminus autos off. Yes, it will take 10 autos to fully stack Terminus. No, this is not going to be difficult because we're going to be impossible to kill, we have lethal tempo that we can abuse, and we also have Blade of the Ruin King, which puts our opponents on a time limit. These two items by themselves are going to break AD carry, but it gets even worse once again. Ginsu's Rage Blade has had some of its stats moved around. We keep the Phantom hit and all the on hit bonuses like the magic damage and bonus attack speed, but we do have it there present on Terminus. A standard 3 item build is going to be Blade the Ruin King into Terminus and then Ginsu's Rage Blade, which will grant us all the stats that we could want. We're tanky, we pump out an insane amount of damage, and we also gain access to that Phantom hit, so we're able to stack our Blade the Ruin King's current health damage as well as the Terminus bonuses way quicker. This is an Exodia build through and through, but there is some counterplay. We can 
can simply just CC this champion, right? Wrong. Instead of going against his third item, we can simply buy a Wit's End if CC is a problem. Riot has adjusted Wit's End, removed the AD from it, and granted it tenacity in its stead. The on-hit damage, magic resist, and attack speed are still all present on this item as well, meaning that we're not really susceptible to AP burst which is of course what we would be using to pick a champion like this. On hit itemization in season 14 is crazy. All right, let's say that there's an 80 champion on the enemy team that can theoretically assassinate us, something like a Zed, right? What counters assassins more than anything? It's going to be HP plus resistances. They can't burst you down through all the tank stats. Unfortunately, the season 14 on hit champion also has the answer to this, as Titanic Hydra is both melee and ranged. We don't need to build any resistances because we get all the resistances that we need from our boots plus terminus. We can stack our terminus even faster using the Titanic active, and then the real cherry on top is that we still have that pesky enchanter pocketing us with damage reduction as well as the burst magic damage on our on hits. There's no winning here. From the first PvE game that I played when I saw the new items, I knew that they were going to be incredibly broken. Now playing on the PvE currently, it seems that everybody has finally caught on and they're only playing on hit items. The PvE doesn't have the greatest of players on it as well. If the average silver or gold player is capable of figuring this out, then you can understand just how broken this is going to be when it hits live servers. I promise you, Terminus is going to be hotfixed. There is no way that it's allowed in its current state. So let's go ahead and summarize our three item build, which is going to be Blade the Rune King into Terminus, followed then by a Ginsu's Rage Blade. If the enemy team has heavy AP crowd control, we can go Wit's End, and then we're not susceptible to that anymore. If the enemy team has any AD Assassins or Bruisers, we go Titanic Hydra, and then the HP that we get from that synergizes well with Terminus, giving us more effective health, especially when paired with an Enchanter. If we don't have an Enchanter, we're still going to be insanely tanky. It doesn't really matter too much. Once we complete our Titanic against AD comps, we still want to be buying a Wit's End for that mixed damage that it does grant us, as well as the Tenacity. This makes us basically unfightable by every single cast of Champion. There's no building a correct resist like armor, because we pump out so much mixed damage, there's no killing us in time because we have too much effective stats, and there's also no crowd controlling us because Wit's End does have tenacity. As a last item, Guardian Angel removes any and all risk. If the enemy team has one very high damage threat like Evelyn, who actually does a decent job at killing these really tanky opponents, we just buy an Anathema's Chains and then shut them down. There is no winning against these on-hit builds, they are going to be completely broken. The only real counterplay that we have is to Anathema them ourselves, and then hope that we can CC them for long enough to kill them in a team fight. Alternatively, what we could do also against this sort of build is just split push. If we can call the on-hit champions and the supports away from our team, and then force them to react to us in a side lane, then we can deal with it. If you play bot lane, you have to play an on-hit champion. If you play support, you're probably going to have to learn some enchanters because this Dreammaker item is completely broken, and unfortunately that's just going to be the way that it is until it is hotfixed. There is no way with its current numbers that it's going to hit live servers and last. Alrighty, now that we've covered the optimal meta build and the optimal counterplay to this meta build, let's go ahead and talk about some of the more fun on-hit items that are being introduced. If the Blade the Rune King Terminus combo was not so potent, I would highly recommend Experimental Hexplate. This item is really great and it's super fun to play with, especially when we have lethal tempo on a champion like Twitch, Kog'Maw, and Varus. Once the Exodia 3 item build goes away, this item, I think, will be nice on the chopping block. This item builds out a Noon Quiver, meaning that it's really strong in the early game. It has a super fun passive, it does grant us HP as well, and then on top of that, it does grant us ultimate ability haste, which is very, very useful on Ash, Varus, Twitch, and that sort of champ who does rely on their ultimate heavily. The burst of attack speed that is granted by this item will also allow us to quickly stack our lethal tempo and whatever other on-hit synergies that we choose to opt into, such as Ginsu's or Blade the Ruin King. Unfortunately, with the raw strength of all the new on-hit items, Runon's Hurricane has kind of lost its place. While this item does have an AoE niche, the raw power that we get from completing a single target item is just that much higher. I do suspect that Runons will receive some sort of buff to make it a little bit more attractive to purchase, but for the time being this item is excessively lackluster. If we're going to be placing this item in any on-hit build, we're going to be completing this as our fifth item overall, just because everything is so much better in its clearly defined niche, whereas Runons is more of a luxury item. Phantom Dancer is unfortunately in a similar boat. This item, while it is very good in the current year, will not be so great in Season 14 because it is just massively outclassed. Essentially, every single target DPS item is going to be much higher than Phantom Dancer, and the power specs that we get from the on-hit items are just so much more meaningful. This will still be an okay boots replacement later on in the game if we desperately need the movement speed, but aside from that, I really don't see much purpose to this item. Anyways, once these on-hit items are nerfed, I'm really excited to see all the cool new places that the meta is going to go in Season 14. Mage items are being reworked, so they're going to be significantly stronger. The tank items have been reworked to be just as strong as the already overpowered mage items. The on-hit items are just completely broken, and unfortunately, the tank items and the mage items do not even compare to just how strong that they are, and the fighter items are basically about the same. Let me know in the comments down below if any of this advice did help you, and also what your favorite new item is. Anyways, this was Unsung with Gamely, thank you all for watching, and hope you all have a wonderful day, I'll see you guys in the next video.